briefing did we get from Heeson and what theme did we choose? The thing with um, Heeson is that Pollux now represents, I think, the, if I get my counting right, the ninth or tenth project we've done with them. A sense of knowing what each other wants and needs is, is really strong and they give us a very free hand um, in how we go about the interior design of these projects. So with Pollux and indeed her sister ship uh, Castor, what we majored on was just a, a really kind of calm and smart and sophisticated um, look. So rather than me just talk at you, I thought it might be interesting, uh, here we are in the slightly messy and disorganized Bannenberg and Rall sample room in the back of the office, which is, you might be able to see, is packed full of uh, stone, glass, timber samples, everything else. So we've got out, um, a pretty good cross-section of what of the architectural finishes and hard finishes that are involved on uh, or being used on Pollux. So you'd come on board uh, on the main deck, really, and uh, joining the boat from the passerelle at the aft end, starboard side, um, up onto the main deck, walking past um, the built-in exterior seating, and then into the main saloon through a powered pair of glass sliding doors. And entering into the main saloon. So that is finished in a kind of pair of contrasting timbers, eucalyptus, pale eucalyptus and dark stained eucalyptus. We've got a, an interesting and pretty chic chevron timber floor in there. You come in through the aft end and on either side of you, you've got um, full height joinery elements, which are bookcases on the port side with storage below. And on the starboard side, we've designed in a kind of uh, integral bar unit. So you move forward from that space into the, where the saloon then widens out. There's these great full height windows, almost full height windows, um, both sides, big seating area in the middle, comfortable seating area. Forward of that, uh, we have a dining table, which can take up to 12 for those moments when you want to have uh, dining inside the yacht. Okay, so moving forward from the dining saloon, you'll go through a sliding door still on the starboard side of the boat and move forward into the main entrance lobby. And then you're walking forward, you will enter the owner's suite, which is an interesting space and particularly um, makes use of these spectacular full height windows. The light absolutely floods in to that space. So you come into the owner's cabin. We have um, designed a slightly curved bulkhead uh, behind the bed and reflected in the opposite, opposite the uh, foot of the bed where there's a TV and uh, more storage. In terms of finishes in the owner's stateroom, there's a continuation of this um, easygoing, soft, and broadly uh, light-toned palette in there. So in other words, we've got uh, this smoky gray finish eucalyptus, which you might just well see on these boards. Uh, same continuation of the chevron pattern, smoked oak. That same uh, knocked back palette continues through into the bathroom where we've got Tassos and uh, Laurent Gris as the chief marbles and also some rather interesting textured uh, limestone. Um, so overall the effect is, I hope, calming, um, but not just uh, super bland and anonymous. So let's double back from the uh, owner's cabin, move back aft again to the entrance lobby, and then we'll take the stairs, the sculptural element we've designed carefully with leather treads, which spirals its way up to the um, wheelhouse deck, uh, and takes us into the sky lounge, which we've designed as a, as a, vers a versatile space. has a freestanding bar, um, and you could just sit there, you know, look out these very panoramic windows, there's comfortable seating, but very much a continuation in terms of architecture and other hard, hard finishes, the same um, smoky chevron floor. So there's a real sense of continuity uh, connecting all these spaces. Uh, so moving forward from the Sky Lounge, if you chose to do that, it moves on your starboard side, there's a fifth guest cabin, what they call the VIP cabin. And then of course, feel free to go forward to the wheelhouse if, um, if uh, th that's an area that you're interested to be in. Let's move down to the lower deck. So we'll move down there. You've got a corridor off which are the entrances to all four guest cabins. The corridor is almost sort of gallery-like in its, in its detailing. So we've got four guest cabins configured as a, a pair of doubles and a pair of twins. Um, 
each with very good um, bathrooms, of course. There's a huge sun deck on Pollux, which is, which is going to be almost certainly the most popular area on board. Um, it's got a big pool, um, it's got a bar, it's got sun lounging, it's got a comfortable seating area. It's a good place to finish the tour, I reckon, is the beach club. Um, so it's a really good space, it's the absolute antithesis of a, of a technical space or rather boring lazarette frankly. Um, finished in, we've got some textured limestone in there, we've got some interesting reeded glass, we've given it a slightly almost sort of origami set of um, panelling details in there. There's a steam room, there's a sauna. It's a great space just to kind of chill, let the world go by walk out onto the, off, onto the swim platform, jump in the water. So, thank you very much for joining me in the uh, privacy of the Bannenberg and Rail sample room. I hope it's given you a, a, a pretty good idea of, uh, of how we've gone about the design process uh, and what we've been up to. Just been joined by design assistants, Moose Bannenberg. Moose, come here. Who's generally kept out of the design the sample room. Um, chiefly to avoid chewing samples or, or other outrages like that. Um, but anyway, thank you, for, thank you for joining us and I hope it's given you a good overview of the project.